The movie is Fanatic, starring this guy, John Travolta. <laughs> How are you? Good. Good, Good to see you, buddy. See you, always. I, uh, I'm watching you in this movie, and yes. first and foremost, what a risky performance. What a great performance Thank this you. is. But I couldn't help but think that while you're making this movie, while you're reading the script, you're thinking, yes, I've seen that. Yes, that's happened. I know that guy. This is terrifying for someone who is you and does what you do for a living. Well, it, it is and it isn't for me because, A, I really identify with this guy on a certain level, which is the passion for people you admire. And I think every one of us has a little bit of moose. That's the name of the character right? in them. They all love some sports figures, some musicians, some uh, icon from history, whatever it is. You have a feeling that you can't describe, except this guy has it on steroids. He just, you know, he's been bullied his whole life. He's been picked on. He's a little bit on the spectrum. But when his favorite movie star treats him, mistreats him like the people that, that don't know better, right? he can't figure it out. He just, it's, he's totally uh, discombobulated by the whole idea that, that the person he loves the most in life, the person that he admires, would even want to treat him that way. So it's a, it's a passion play of some sort, really, you know? Right. Yeah. I was telling you, my producing partner produced Criminal Activities, and he told me a story in Cleveland that the first day he met you, he said, I have to warn you about me. I appreciate my fans. And so to the extent that you give them access to me, I'm going to give them all the time they Correct. need. If a span, fan spots me, I give it over. I take pictures, I sign a, a photograph, whatever they want or need. And that's just my personal moral code about it. It doesn't mean that others have to follow that code. It's just that's my code. I feel like you're inherently a nice guy, but there's also probably a part of you that remembers the very first lick of fame that you got when all of a sudden you were around famous people. And I knew fame prior to being famous. I'll tell you why. Because my whole family was a theater family, and they would do plays and things and commercials with people that were famous. So I was surrounded by famous people my whole childhood. And I decided by watching all of these different people, what type, if I ever had the luck. <laughs> who you wanted to be. Uh, who I wanted. Who, who you didn't want to be. Exactly. Now name some names. No, I can't do that. <laughs> can't do that to them. But yes. Do you true. remember a time that you met someone that, you know, despite being surrounded by the industry, your whole life as a kid growing up, despite knowing the business and what you wanted to be and what fame is all mm -hmm. about, that you still got that lump in your throat and you said, hey, excuse me, I just wanted to, be, to meet you and I just kid you. 100%. Who I would mean, that be? Okay. First of all, let's see, when I was little, it was Jimmy Cagney. It was Paul McCartney and the Beatles. Wait, wait you met Paul McCartney and the Beatles at a young age? No, no, age? I mean, that, that's... Okay, okay, who, who would have done? Later, when I met them, that happened, what you're talking about. I was too little to have known them then, but that's right. Even, even a pit bull last year, or no, three years ago when I first met him, I was right. excited. I'm a fan of people. I, if I like how they perform, I like them as an actor, I get excited about admire, you know, telling them. Sure. You know? So you mentioned Pitbull. By the way, the bald look looks amazing on uh, you. Thank you. It's working. You. Uh, you have a rock star that's pretty much behind the camera directing this movie. Yeah, How does Fred that help Durst. a movie? Yes. It helps it because he's a real visionary. Fred Durst is not only a brilliant performer and, and, and songwriter uh, and video, uh, video director, but he had a real vision for this movie, a real vision. And he had an even bigger vision to imagine my playing, not a film star, but to play the fan. I thought that was very insightful. Yeah, tell me a, a scene in particular that he pushed you on or that he particularly shaped. Well, he would help me with each of them because he would improvise with me before each scene. So in character, you know, I would be in character and he'd say, hey, how you doing, most? What are you doing? Did you see any famous people? You know, and I would go off on a run, and then he'd send me off to another department, the prop department or the lighting department, and then I'd ask. They'd ask me questions, and then finally he'd see when I arrived at the beingness and the zone, and then boom, he'd say, "Action, start!" And then I would do a scene. So it was very helpful. It, it worked. That. There's something so yeah. organic about this, and uh, again, I could imagine people dropped in this role that would not commit, would not give into it as. Oh, I had to as much as you he, did. He, he was too much fun not to commit to. You know. You found and, some heart in there. That's I love that. That was important. Because you can't do the things he does on screen. <laughs> right. You know, from the maid to the tying up the star at the end, I, I, you have to find, you know, why he's doing it and understand why he's doing it. And I did. I felt like I found the key to him. 
He's you know? done so many things in the movie that aren't particularly relatable, yet there are moments throughout the movie, like even towards the end where he goes, she's a bad nurse. Who can't relate to having situations like that? <laughs> exactly. Um, so there's so many moments in this movie that I know you have experienced. What's the weirdest thing someone's had you sign? Oh, gosh, the weirdest thing. Well, I've, I've signed different body parts, arms, chest, uh, legs. Um, I've signed... Uh, uh, oh, I, I just thought of something. So we, we have a, a mutual friend, Jim Woodworth, with the New York City Firefighters Detox Program. He told me he met you before he met you in that way at a, a gas station. He went into the bathroom and he thought how awkward to bump into a celebrity yeah. in the bathroom. <laughs> he, had to, Always, yes. he had to wait until he went outside and... Uh, and say hi. And say hi. Yeah, well, that's happened for sure. <laughs> uh, any other awkward fan encounters that you, stories that you're comfortable sharing? I know some are probably across the line, not unlike stuff in this well, movie. Well, a couple but... of fans uh, got into my house years ago and, and not that long ago, but uh, they were not ill-intended. They just wanted to meet me. And so I, I didn't have a real problem with it other than how did this happen? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, it was handled. All right, so for most of us, uh, us driving across the bridge, that's our commute. You probably flew in. Did you fly yourself in, or were you I did. Uh, we were, I, I'm trying to keep track of the cities. The last city I was in was Chicago. And uh, tonight will be LA, and then uh, back to, anyway, we're, we're going all over the country with this movie. And are you it, flying yourself, uh, yes, most of those I, venues? I, I try to, as, as long as I've had enough sleep, I do, yeah. Well, you're so, remarkable in everything well, you do. You. I love I that this is another feather in your cap. I appreciate that. Good to see you, John. You Thanks too. for your time. Yeah. Pleasure.